Okay, so as we discussed in the last video that what is the basic algorithm to solve the equations and how you can write the code. So on my right I have the C code that I have written using the algorithm that I taught you in the last video. So it goes like that you have this particular system which is 7 by 7. So if you say that my grid is rather 7. So that will help you in visualizing better. So I, I have the final situation or I have the physical situation of a 7 by 7. So this particular array over here that is UC, VC and PC. This is at the grid nodes so that should be 7 by 7. So the next part was that I have the staggering of the grid and my U velocity it was 7 by 8. So the U velocity it was 7 by 8 and UN is the U new the, or the updated velocity and for the V velocity is what 8 by 7 so it by 8 by 7 for the V velocity that is grid plus 1 by grid for the pressure it was 8 by 8 so it goes like 8 by 8 8 by 8 for the old and the new pressure and this particular is like to check if the divergence has gone beyond certain level so I use this particular term and I define my dx and dy just like we did before that uh, I divided my whole domain into the uh, into equal squares so my dx and dy are equal and they are simply one because this total length is one so one divided by the number of intervals so I will write it back here that I am using a grid size of 128 by 128 so I have 127 interval in each direction and the dt that I'm using it's something like this to satisfy the CFL criteria and the delta in my equation over here in my continuity equation over here this particular delta it's 4.5 and my Reynolds number is 100 so I initialize my u velocity remember that this is the stagger u velocity so uh, I say that for every point the uij is 0 this, this is the initial condition but for the ui grid that is the topmost and the ui grid minus 1 that is the second top so they should be equal to 1 and 1 so their average is 1 so in my case the u equal to the capital u is 1 so the top and the second top is both equal to 1 and that makes the average of them equal to 1 because uh, I have a zero velocity at the boundaries for v so I just define a zero v velocity everywhere in my domain and the same goes for the pressure I define a pressure equal to 1 at the initial level. So I say that until and unless my divergence is greater than some particular value I will keep on iterating so the iteration goes on that first I will do it for the momentum equation so for the momentum equations I have the new velocity is I, I just solve this particular equation and it goes like that this particular term delta u square over dx gets over here right here the u e square minus u w square over 2 dx and the next term is delta u v over delta y it is over here that is the average of u it the divided by 2 is accommodated into this 0 0.25 and then the average of v minus at the bottom over here the average of u and the average of v divided by dy. The next one is the pressure gradient it goes something like this that PE minus PW you can check the indexes over here because they matter a lot so you can draw your picture of control volume and you can check which indices should it be IJ minus I minus 1J or should it be I plus 1 minus I and the last term is the viscous term which is defined using these EPW and NPS so it's I plus 1 minus 2I plus I minus 1 over dx square plus in the y direction J plus 1 minus U 2 Uij plus Ui J minus 1 and divided by dy square so that goes for the interior points and because for the boundary we say that for the boundary there are some points that should be equal to zero because they are on the boundary so these are over here because this is the i equal to zero so i equal to zero implies the left wall so that is zero 
and i equal to grid minus 1 implies the right wall so that is 0 again and this one is the bottom wall and because the bottom wall is u equal to 0 so the average of those two equal to 0 or simply the bottom one should be negative of the immediate top so that is over here that at j equal to 0 it should be negative of what it is as j equal to 1 and the similar goes for on the top that because I have uh, the u equal to 1 so if I say that u top plus u second top divided by 2 equal to 1 that it means that u top equal to 2 minus u second top so that is the complete thing for my u velocity equation and the same thing happens for the y velocity equation that uh, for the top and the bottom I say that the u the, this is for the bottom that is j equal to 0 this is 0 and this is for the j equal to grade minus 1 it's 0 again and for the left wall I say that it is the negative of what the value is at i equal to 1 and for the rightmost part it's negative of the, its immediate neighbor so this particular thing is uh, its complete uh, solution of the v momentum for the v velocity so the next part is the continuity equation so I said that you can use the uh, updated velocity so my updated velocity is vn and un so I'm just gonna use that in this particular equation over here so this is my divergence that u east minus u west over dx and v north minus v south over dy and you can see that dt and delta they are from the other side and for the pressure as I told you the pressure across the interface they should be equal so the pressure at the bottom it is equal to the pressure at j equal to 1 and the pressure at top it's equal to the pressure at j equal to grade minus 1 and this is for the right and the left wall so this is basically the solution of the continuity equation so we have solved the continuity equation we have solved the momentum equations and now time to check the error so, so the error is I, I for every interior point I store my error in mij and then I add it over so this particular error it is over the entire domain and it displays me uh, the divergence of the velocity that is delta u over delta x delta v over delta y and for every thousand step my code should display what the error is and after I check for the error that I iterate I say that the new velocity becomes the old so that I can continue to check or continue to iterate for the velocity until I reach the steady state and that that's all so if and until my this particular condition is satisfied I've, I will uh, my code will keep running so I will run my code and I will explain the further part of the code right away so I will go here I will put my ACM file over here I will compile and I will execute it okay so for every thousand time steps it's gonna display the divergence of the velocity and if it's going down if it's decaying it's good so we'll keep on this later so continue to the code and right here I did something to get my nodal points and this is because uh, these u velocities they are at these staggered points and they are not at the grid points so to get the grid points I will use the linear interpolation so for this particular point over here I will use I or you can say the up and the bottom so it's uh, in the interpolation from the ij and j plus 1 and the same goes for the v velocity that it's from the left and right so it's interpolating in the x direction so it's v i j and v i plus 1 j again just check of the indices because if you use a different indexing or if if you use a different staggering your indexing could be completely different so just make a note of the staggering and make sure that which i j is related to which i j because if you want to uh, use suppose 2 comma 2 for the main mesh so 2 comma 2 for the main mesh is over here if I say that in the C language that is 0 1 2 and 0 1 2 so this is 2 comma 2 for the main mesh while for the u velocity 2 comma 2 is over here so it's below the main mesh so that is why I did 
j plus 1 and for the pressure because every main mesh or every physical mesh point is surrounded by four points so I did the bilinear interpolation and this is the average of the four surrounding so that is my real or the physical solution and after that I write the solution in a plot file or in a data file which I can use for visualization and I write my u, v and p and I also write a central u velocity so that I can compare my results with the benchmark so let's see what's the status of the code and yeah it's already done and the error has been very low and I will refresh I will alright so this is my uvp file which contains the distribution of the pressure velocity and this one over here is the central u file I'll open them both okay so the first of all is the contour file so this is the mesh that is 128 by 128 and for the contour I can see how is the trend for the u velocity v velocity and the pressure so from the contour you cannot make out much but if you use the streamlines you can check for the position of the vortex which I show you while ANSYS but in ANSYS we solve for the Reynolds number 1000 so don't expect these results to be same because this one is for a Reynolds number of 100 so time to check if these results are correct or not they look pretty good so the one of the method to compare is you can compare with the experimental or you can compare it with the benchmark so I have the benchmark for Reynolds number 100 and I will just import it over here this is the benchmark result and I will create the benchmark file and on the x-axis I have u over capital U and y over capital Y or the total height and this is from the paper of Kia which you can easily find on the internet and I will export it here and I will I'm just interested in the data points so because there are only a few data points so if I compare the lines of these two results they might not look very good okay you can actually see it over here that if I just compare the lines because for the gear there are just some data points which you can see over here so the green one is from the benchmark and yeah I will just eliminate this line so you can see over here that the my result is the red line which is actually the value of my u velocity across uh, along the center line so this is my trend for the u velocity and it matches greatly with the benchmark so this is what you should do after you're done with a simulation that you should verify and validate your results if they are not good try to debug your code there must be some mistake in your code otherwise there is no chance or there or your scheme that you're using it's not uh, accurate enough so there are a lot of things that could happen if your results are not good against the benchmark or the experimentals so after you're done with that any simulation I will always suggest you to validate your results because if you don't do that there is no meaning to your simulation and it could be completely wrong it's not just about these fancy colors it's about this particular validation that you get and once you are saying that oh it's fine then you can do all sort of vortexes all contours everything that you want to do so I think that would be all for this particular video and I think that this particular video that is these two videos they will help you in writing your codes and if you alter the boundary conditions you can do a lot of things you can even write for a channel flow because in channel flow you have a velocity inlet or a pressure inlet and for the top and the bottom you can be assigned the zero velocities so you can try to do that in your code and I hope that these videos would be helpful for you so you can if you still have any problem you can refer to the code that I just saw you over here yeah I would be putting this code in the description below and you can check this out and you can try to write your own code and if you feel problem you can consult with this code and if you have any suggestion or still you feel any trouble with the algorithm or while writing the code you can always contact me here and yeah
thank you for watching the video and if you like it please like this and please subscribe to my channel thank you